Initially, my intent for this video was to look deeper into the 1985 bombing and the MOVE organization because, as a native Philadelphian, I felt it was an important piece of history. I also wanted to know who John Africa was and what he stood for. But as I began to dive deep into my research, I uncovered some hard truths about the organization. I still felt it was important for me to tell this story, the entire story. So I will include a section at the end that explains some of the allegations that ex-MOVE members have brought forward against the organization. I will not be able to touch on every single point in this video, especially as a lot of information is still fairly new, being brought to light in the past year or so, but I will leave all of my sources below so that you can look deeper into this story if you would like. I don't want to make the intro any longer than what it is, so without further ado, here is the story of the MOVE organization. John Africa was born Vincent Lopez Leapart on July 26, 1931 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His father, Frederick Leapart, was a handyman and his mother, Lenny May, was a homemaker. Many of his friends and family nicknamed him Benny. He grew up during the Great Depression and his family was definitely affected by it. One of his siblings, Louise Leapart, states that they had no refrigerator or gas stove. They instead had to cook over a fire on a wood stove and use an icebox to keep food from spoiling. John was considered borderline intellectually disabled, testing with an IQ of 79 as a child. Although his IQ was low, friends and family described John as very intelligent, but he was still unable to read or write well. In kindergarten, he was enrolled at McMichael Elementary School, but in fifth grade, he was moved to a school that would teach simple trades to children that were slow learners called E. Spencer Miller. He later dropped out of school at the age of 16 with only a fifth grade education. In 1952, John was drafted into the Korean War, serving about two years in the infantry unit. In 1954, he received an honorable release from active duty. Once he returned, he stayed in Philadelphia for a little while before finding a job in Atlantic City, New Jersey and moving there. While in Atlantic City, he met and married a woman named Dorothy Clark and they moved back to Philadelphia together. Dorothy helped John with his reading and writing skills and friends say that John was very level-headed and dependable in their marriage. Dorothy later described their marriage as ordinary. Not long after being married, John moved to New York, leaving Dorothy in Philadelphia. They eventually divorced. In the mid-1960s, John moved to the Powhatan Village area of West Philadelphia, close to the University of Pennsylvania campus. The area was a hub of activism that made Africa feel right at home. He would often leave his door unlocked and had a sense of community with his neighbors. His sister, Louise, says that she would often stop by and find numerous notes on John's door, from neighbors thanking John for allowing them to borrow items, sharing food, etc. In 1971, John and 13 others signed the Community Housing Inc. Manifesto, which outlined policy changes that addressed discrimination against the poor. Community Housing Inc. was a co-op where residents would pool money together in order to purchase homes in the neighborhood to live in, with the goal of fighting against an oppressive society that bulldozed homes to make way to build more academic housing. When faced with foreclosure, this co-op would step in and purchase John's home so that he could continue to live there. Around 1972, John Africa and Donald Glassy founded the MOVE organization, originally called the American Christian Movement for Life. Donald says that John appeared to be a warm and loving person and John's ideas impressed him. Donald urged John to write his ideas down, but as John was illiterate, he was unable to. So Donald decided to help him out. Together, Africa and Glassy created the 300 page book, The Teachings of John Africa, also known as the Guidelines, the Book of Guidelines, or the MOVE Bible. It took them a year to complete, and Africa was heavily inspired by the Black Panther Party and his ideologies. This manifesto espoused the importance of self-reliance in a nature-based lifestyle that included scavenging, composting, eating raw foods, and exercise. Ultimately, it called for a return to nature even for those who lived in the city. 
Africa's teaching were anti-science and anti-technology. 1972 is also when Vincent actually changed his name to John Africa. He chose the last name Africa to represent what he saw as a homeland and the place where life began. Later on, members of the organization will follow in John's footsteps and adopt Africa as their last name as well. Africa and Glassy decided to move the organization to a home on Pearl Street in West Philadelphia. The movement began to grow, but as it grew, Glassy states that John became more controlling. The pair parted ways and John went on to become the sole face of MOVE. MOVE showed their beliefs through their actions. Members value the personal discipline and physical strength derived from their hard manual labor and maintained a hefty work schedule of daily activities such as exercising, scrubbing floors, running dogs, chopping firewood, shoveling snow, sweeping the street, etc. Demonstrating their reverence for all forms of life, MOVE looked after neighbors' pets, helped homeless people find places to live, assisted the elderly with home repairs, intervened in violence between local gangs and college fraternities, and helped incarcerated offenders meet parole requirements through a rehabilitation program. MOVE states that, after adopting their way of life, many individuals overcame problems of drug addiction, physical disabilities, infertility, and alcoholism. MOVE will also engage in nonviolent protests where they use strategic profanity at zoos, pet shops, and more. They will also often perform these demonstrations with a bullhorn outside of their home, upsetting neighbors and police alike. Around this time, MOVE began to garner media attention. News accounts would state that members were unhealthy and never bathed, which MOVE members denied. The media also condemned the members' use of profanity, appearance, and teachings. MOVE began to protest one newspaper in particular, the Black-owned Philadelphia Tribune. They eventually got the Tribune to agree to run a column titled On the Move, which will be coordinated by John Africa and written by MOVE members. The column started in the summer of 1975 and ran for about a year. On May 9th, 1974, Philadelphia police officers stopped two pregnant MOVE members, Janine and Leasing Africa. The two were walking to the nearby corner store to get food, and for unknown reasons, police officers began to use excessive force against the women, slamming one stomach first into a police car and holding them both overnight without food or water. They both suffered miscarriages as a result of this, prompting MOVE to protest at the 18th Police District in Philadelphia. MOVE states that over the next year, police will continue to harass and abuse MOVE members at their demonstrations. In 1977, a court order was granted requiring MOVE to vacate their home at 311 North 33rd Street in the Powelton Village section of West Philadelphia. MOVE refused to leave their home though, and on August 8, 1978, the police showed up with bulldozers to seize their home. MOVE fought back, and a shootout erupted between the organization and the police. One officer, James Ramp, was murdered during the shootout, and several others were injured, including firefighters, police officers, MOVE members, and bystanders. Although MOVE maintains that they are not responsible for Officer Ramp's death, the police arrested nine members for the murder of the cop. These nine members include Eddie, Janine, Janet, Delbert, Phil, Merle, Debbie, Chuck, and Mike Africa. All nine members were sentenced to 30 to 100 years with the chance of parole granted in 2008. Two of the nine members, Merle and Phil, passed away behind bars. Merle in 1998 at the age of 47, and Phil in 2015 at the age of 59. Debbie and her husband, Mike Africa, were both released from prison in 2018 and tied the knot in 2019 officially. They spent 40 years apart in prison. Janine, Eddie, and Janet Africa were released in 2019. Janine now serves as a Minister of Education for MOVE. 
Chuck and Delbert Africa were released in 2020, but Delbert sadly passed away only six months later from bone and prostate cancer. Delbert was brutally beaten by police officers during the 1978 incident and suffered broken ribs and a broken jaw because of this. In 1981, John Africa went to trial to defend himself against charges for the 1978 shootout with the police and managed to get himself acquitted on all charges. About a year later, Move decided to relocate to a home at 6221 Osage Avenue in the Cobbs Creek area of West Philadelphia. This area was a quiet, middle-class neighborhood in comparison to the area Move was coming from, which was mainly inhabited by college students or recent college graduates and a lot more lively. Move's new neighbors complained about them stating that the home was littered with trash and the organization would broadcast their messages, which often included foul language, over bullhorns. With increasing pressure from residents, Mayor Wilson Good, who was also Philadelphia's first black mayor, ordered the eviction of Move from their home. Once again, Move was in the middle of a battle to stay at their residence. On May 12, 1985, Move was ordered to vacate the premises of their Osage Avenue home. Move refused, and a standoff between Move and the police ensued. Police threw tear gas canisters into the home, and another shootout between police and Move members began. On May 13, 1985, the Philadelphia Police Department dropped a C4 and Tovex infused satchel bomb on Move's home. A fire broke out as Move had gas canisters stored inside the home. And although there were firefighters on the scene, they let the fire burn. As a result, 60 plus homes were destroyed and over 250 people were left homeless. There were also 11 MOVE members who died in the fire, one being John Africa himself, and five of them being children ages 7 to 13. Two people, Birdie and Ramona Africa, survived with terrible burns. They state that police fired at members trying to escape but Philadelphia police deny this claim. Soon after the 1985 bombing, Mayor Good appointed the MOVE Commission with the goal of investigating this incident. The MOVE Commission issued a report on March 6, 1986, reprimanding the city for its decisions. The report stated, the city administration discounts a negotiation as a method of resolving the problem. Any attempted negotiations were haphazard and uncoordinated. It also stated the mayor's failure to call a halt to the operation on May 12th, when he knew that children were in the house, was grossly negligent and clearly risked the lives of those children. The commission agreed that the police most likely would not have used the same tactic had this been a white neighborhood and called for a grand jury investigation but no prosecutions of the city or the police department resulted from this finding. Ramona Africa, one of the survivors of the bombing, was charged with rioting and conspiracy and served seven years in prison after the 1985 bombing. In 1996, Ramona and two family members of MOVE members killed in the bombing were awarded $1.5 million in a civil suit judgment. The jury also found that Philadelphia officials had authorized the use of excessive force and had violated MOVE members' Fourth Amendment constitutional protections against unreasonable search and seizure. The city also paid over $27 million in legal fees in rebuilding the homes destroyed in the bombing, and MOVE was paid $2.5 million to settle wrongful death lawsuits for the children who died in the bombing. Although MOVE has done great things and has some great ideals, there have recently been accounts of horrendous things happening within MOVE. On July 2, 2021, three former MOVE members released a statement announcing they were leaving the organization and that a lot of information will be coming to light about MOVE. They alleged child abuse, predatory alienation, and death threats, amongst many other dangers that were present within the group, or cult as they called it. These three members were June Stokes, formerly known as Pixie Africa and daughter of the MOVE spokesperson, Pam Africa, Whit Sims, formerly known as Whit Africa and daughter of Debbie and Mike Africa of the MOVE 9, and Josh Robbins, formerly known as Josh Africa. 
All three of these members were born into MOVE and spent their entire lives within his reigns. June Stokes also went into hiding with her children, stating that she was told by Alberta Africa, one of MOVE's alleged current leaders, that she would be murdered if she ever spoke out against or left MOVE. Other former members have joined these three and signed their statement as well. Following the release of the statement, there was a blog and podcast release that went into detail about the atrocities these victims face within MOVE. They also talk about the inner workings of the organization. For example, many people see Pam and Ramona Africa as the leaders of MOVE. They are often the ones speaking out and being the face of the organization. But ex-MOVE members allege that Sue and Alberta Africa are the real leaders, and they have a say-so in every aspect of every member's life. The Leaving MOVE 2021 blog states that Alberta, or Bert as they call her, and Sue, or Rhea, control the multi-million dollar trust for the parents of the children that were lost in the 1985 bombing. With this money, they have been able to live lavish lives while many MOVE members live below the poverty line. They state that Alberta owns a $400,000 apartment in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, frequently takes international vacations, and does not follow the diet or exercise regimen that they teach to MOVE members. Maria Hardy was one of the ex-MOVE members that joined the original three in signing their statement about MOVE. She was born into MOVE as Maria Africa and says that she faced a lot of abuse within the organization. She writes, For my entire childhood, I grew up in a very patriarchal and misogynistic cult-like environment, and from a young age, I watched as young women were coerced into marriages and began bearing children as soon as they started menstruating. She also alleges that the group pushes very harmful ideologies about sex on young girls. Girls were taught that feminism, critical thinking, education, being independent, and having sex solely for pleasure is all, for women, sinful behavior that will be met with consequences. Likewise, these young girls were told that if they have sex with multiple partners, they are a whore and will inevitably contract STDs or get pregnant by a man who will abandon and or abuse them. MOVE allegedly also teaches their followers that being gay is one of the greatest sins. They allegedly threaten queer members or members they suspect of being queer with physical violence and mental abuse. As I mentioned before, MOVE allegedly also forces girls as young as 12 into motherhood. One of the ex-members that signed the letter, June Stokes, was forced to get married and have her first child around this age. There were also many other allegations, including colorism, abuse, and even murder. So many survivors have come forward, sharing their claims with the world. If you would like to dive deeper into their claims and MOVE's history, I will have all of my sources, including the link to the blog that I talked about and the GoFundMe to support June Stokes below. Although MOVE has some great ideals, it seems that its past is a lot more complicated than what is widely believed. I really hope you all found this video informational, and if you have any thoughts, go ahead and comment them down below. Make sure you also like this video and subscribe if you would like to see more content from me. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!